Hi, welcome back on to another week of the garden tour. Um, I feel like this week I'm a little behind on chores that I could keep up with. The peas definitely need to be picked. There's some weeds that I need to take care of, but work has me extra busy. The twins apparently think it's time to go through a bit of a sleep regression, so a little bit less sleep on top of a little bit less sleep with all the hours putting in at work. So I have not had much time to come out and really even look at anything. Um, I did have three bouquets ordered this week that I put together on Friday and sent those off. They looked really good. My snapdragons are coming in like crazy, so any place that I can find home for a bouquet is awesome. Uh, zinnias still look like they're a long ways off. I don't feel quite so bad. I've heard of some people that are behind with their zinnias as well. So, we'll see. We've had such cold, cool weather at night that I don't know that I'm really going to get my cucumbers to take off at all. You know, we still have, I'm going to say, eight weeks left that they have the chance to take off. I just don't think. I feel like they're so far behind. A lot of people will buy started plants and go from there. Cucumbers and melons and squash don't necessarily transplant that well, but that's what a lot of people do in this area because of the weather. But you'd have to get them in order to get them ahead of a lot of other people. I don't like to buy them that early because then I have to find out a place to put them and keep them from getting leggy because... We really do have that chance of frost right into June. So, we'll see what comes of them. Hard to say. My potatoes are almost done flowering. The beans, I think, are just starting to flower. I've seen a small handful of Japanese beetles, which are everybody's arch nemesis around here anyways. Um, I have to keep an eye out for earwig damage, but I haven't noticed as much this year. Yeah. We also, okay, so this week, this week, uh, the fun and chaos here was we were overrun with skunks. I don't know why the skunks have moved in, but we had at least seven different skunks that I'm aware of. Um, we were able to get rid of a couple of them, I think four, but I, I feel like I can't even take my dogs for a walk because the last thing I want to deal with is a skunk dog because that's not fun so we have a bit of a skunk problem we're also trying to take care of i mean we live on 100 plus acres so as long as they stay away from wherever i'm at i don't have a problem but right now they're trying to come into my yard and that's a problem so fun fun but let's take a look at the garden and see how everything looks. The caladiums are looking pretty good. I believe this end's still supposed to be the light ones. Those are all of the orange ones farther at that end. Cosmos are still a little small. Hoping that they'll gain some height. One that is flowering. The bells of Ireland that were came up from last year's plants. Those are starting to flower down there. Cute little things. Lads look pretty good. They're a little dried out and I'm noticing some yellowing and I'm not sure if that's from being dry or my guess is being a little bit low on nitrogen. Uh, I did not have a chance to put fertilizer, compost, on the fields last fall, or on the, the fields, on the rows. So I think that might be a little bit of that. Zinnias are looking good and branched out pretty quickly. Here are a couple of my bells of Ireland that I have used in arrangements. More zinnias. The sunflowers are taken right off. Tomatoes, 
need to be tied up and need to be pruned on again terribly, including these guys here. They stay shorter, so they stay below uh, my trellis in quite a bit, at least these ones, and makes it a little bit more difficult to keep them uh, contained. Again, cherry tomatoes, a lot of times I keep those trellis pretty tightly, but haven't had the time to come out and put them together. How is the kohlrabi looking? That one still does not look so good. I'm not sure what's up with the leaf deformation. This one, this one's starting to form up. There we go. That one's starting to form up. That one's starting to form up. A little bit bigger, and I think those would be just about ready. Onions finally are starting to look like they have some size. The glads that I planted in a later succession, those are coming up. These cosmos down here. Still some pretty good looking onions. These cosmos down here look good. I clipped some of these in hopes that it would help them branch out and take off. And it looks like it's helping. So that's good. Garlic. Still keeping an eye on it. It hasn't started to die back to a point where I'm wanted to pull all the garlic yet. I think, I think it'll be a little bit, but we'll keep an eye on that. We have radishes ready to bloom from going to seed. Need to pull those out and give those to the chickens. My beets. Oh, let's see if I can get past the leaf here. You can just see the tops of those, so they're probably ready to get pulled out. I only have a couple, so I could pull those and some carrots and roast them up. My peas need to be picked and shelled. Hopefully if I can get some stuff under control, maybe this evening. My husband actually, he didn't shell peas growing up as a kid, but since he's, since we've had the garden, he's helped shell peas and he doesn't mind it. Though the first year I had peas that were really not meant for shelling. And he was like, that's it. We're getting a pea sheller if we're doing this. And I was like, eh, I think you're a little ahead of where we need to be. Here are the snapdragons looking really good. Like the plants that have bushed out so much. I have like this is one stem, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six coming up on that one. And like all with really good height. Uh, the reds look good. Those pinks look good. Yellows. Whites are all still, they're still coming on because I did go through and give them a pruning snip. I have a bunch of minis. I think I might cut some and offer some mini jars at like half price and see if that works. Um, Gomfrina starting to flower and send up flower spikes. I'm told once this stuff takes off, it takes off. So we shall see. It's definitely put on a lot of height since last week. Same with the white gun, Frina. Sea Holly, which I don't think blooms its first year, so we're going to see. Sloja. Finally starting to put a little bit of height on with the heat that we've had. Has not branched out well. I think I need to try, try and see if I can either save seed and or um, get some more seed. But I think I might have to try pinching them for some of them next year and see if that helps. Yarrow's looking really good. I'm loving the yarrow. I really like I haven't even had a ton of this yarrow, yarrow bloom yet, but I've had wild yarrow out back. And it makes me want to plant like a huge patch of yarrow and put yarrow in every flower bed. They're just there's so much that comes from one plant and they can get some really nice stems on them and I'm highly impressed with it. Basil is looking good. I also think that's something I might need to pinch next year. I think some of the stuff, like the purple basil, was almost naturally pinched by how much it struggled when it first came out. Um, and it's farther behind. But it's something I think I'm actually going to be able to cut multiple usable stems from. And like the lemon basil, 
that needs to get some more height before I can really even use that as a single stem in a bouquet. I think the heat would help that if we would get, you know, not have quite as cool nights, but we shall see. That yarrow looks good. I need to come cut the garlic scape. My one garlic scape. I can make some garlic green beans with. Sage is looking pretty good. Again, it would need some more height before I could use it. Beans are all starting to flower down in there. So I will have beans here right soon. Beans always become such a massive plant. Then I have all of my potatoes because I have not been out here to pluck bugs. I think there are quite a few of those squash beetles, but the plants still look relatively okay, so I'm going with it. My dill plant, again, once I have some beans, then I can make some dilly beans and use some of my dill, but look at the size of that flower. It's massive. Then I have my squash and zucchini. Let's see, I'm starting to get some flowers down in here. That one has more of an adult looking flower. Let's see, what is it? It is a uh, male flower? Female flower? I feel like I'm going to get this wrong. Male flower. A lot of pollen. Uh, same with this one. Another male flower, so you have to keep an eye out. If you're only getting male flowers or female flowers, and yes, they look different, and I would show you the difference if I had one that had difference going on, then you'll, you won't really get any squash from it. Uh, one of the problems I am noticing, see all of this on this leaf? That is powdery mildew. And I, like, I took a couple plants out of this hill that had it pretty bad. I took some leaves off of this plant, but I'm still seeing quite a bit of it. So, powdery mildew is like a, a mold spore that I believe gets in your soil. And once it's in your soil, like, you're done. There's, <laughs> there's nothing you can do for it. You will never get rid of it. It is done. So... Normally, my plants are older before they do get it. I've had it every single year. I don't know any way to truly avoid having it. But, I'm really sad to see it showed up this early. So, I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. I may have to try not doing squash, but it affects squash. As any, uh, it affects just about any plant, so it's not really picky. But... Something to keep an eye on. I think there's a, you can do like soapy water, or maybe like milky soapy water to try to get rid of it. I've, no one's ever had great success that I've ever heard. Um, so I'll keep an eye on it and see where it goes. Cucumbers, starting to get a little bit of height so that I can wind them on their chalice, but not much. Carrots. Carrot tops look like monsters. I don't know. The soil's not moist, so I don't really moist. <laughs> I don't want to try to pull a carrot out because it probably wouldn't work. It'd likely break. But you can see like the shoulders of that one. Uh, there we go. So the shoulders of this one look pretty good. Let's see if I can get it to wiggle out. expert tip. If you want to pull your carrots, I highly recommend watering the ground for a long time prior to pulling them. Helps quite a bit. So yeah, carrots are definitely ready. They could be pulled. Um, or I can just kind of pull them slowly, which I think is my plan. But looking good. A little bit of bug. A little bit of soil compaction, that's why we're starting to see the split on the root, but should pull these and some beets and roast them up together. They make for a pretty dish. Pickling cucumbers, one plant's doing well, the other two are really slow. Spinach, that is 
gone to seed. But it's keeping weeds down, so win some, lose some. I've got kale. Celery's looking good, which I made some chicken salad sandwich. I made a chicken salad sandwich, so I came out and got some celery for that. That was nice to have fresh, like, baby celery. Cabbage. I've used one. I have two that are... That one's starting to split pretty bad. This one's just starting to split and has this big caterpillar. Never touch the fuzzy caterpillars. Never touch fuzzy caterpillars. You, fuzzy caterpillars are more likely to be poisonous, and you never know, so just don't touch the fuzzy caterpillars. I should pull this head and make some, um, what's the word, coleslaw. That would be really good. But that's how everything is looking. Hopefully, after this week, work will be less crazy, and I will have some time to catch up on some weeding and my garden chores, get my peas all taken care of at some point. Those split cabbage, I will probably feed to the chicken. But we will see. So that is an update. Hopefully you've enjoyed coming along, seeing the progress of everything. I really have enjoyed journaling it. Um, so that way I'll have something to look back on all winter. Because winter is long here. I will know some issues that I had. I can look everything up for any issues that I had and then be able to make changes from there. It's easier than remembering to write it out and easier than like looking back to re read it all. I do write quite a bit of stuff down still, but this will give me an easy reference point. So. Okay. I hope you have a wonderful week. Maybe I will have a chance to make an arrangement for you this week, but if not, I will see you next week for another garden tour. I should do a garden bed tour too. But let's uh, let's take a quick look at this. This is a volunteer sunflower, so we ripped this whole area up this spring to put in this sidewalk, put in the, the brick so that it would have a nice clean edge up against the grass. Don't have to worry about the stones getting into the grass. And then we brought in dirt and put the dirt in, leveled it out, and look what decided to show up. <laughs> and of course, it's in the perfect location because it's right on the edge. And I've told my husband he's not allowed to hurt it or touch it. And I've keep, kept the dogs from running it over and the goats away from it. And now I'm going to have this beautiful volunteer branching sunflower. So I'm excited to see what it does. I almost always have a volunteer sunflower here or there, and it's just so worth it to me to keep the sunflower and let it bloom, even if they are in inconvenient locations. But this one's a great location. Just thought I'd share. Okay, have a great week.